Hey, Ghosts and Ghouls, ScreenFan1990 here with video number two of what will probably end up being uh, my four-part series on Lee Waddell's Poly Shroud Small Dot Gen 1. Uh, if you guys watched my last video, then you heard me talk about CreepyCon in Ontario, California. This past weekend being February 4th and 5th, 2023, and some of the things that I ended up getting signed while I was there people that I ended up meeting, and some things that I brought back. Uh, this right here is obviously courtesy of Lee Waddell. This is his small dot poly shroud gen one, and he knew that I, in the past, had done some whitening treatments and um, various videos of me taking care of screen masks, and he hit me up and asked me if I would take on his poly shroud gen one, and of course, I didn't hesitate to tell him yes. And so yeah, here we are. This video is gonna be me cleaning this mask um, to try to get it back to smelling pretty good and uh, looking pretty fine. So the next video that I will end up doing is definitely gonna be the whitening treatment part. That one's probably gonna be fairly long. Uh, if you guys have watched the one that I did a couple of years ago, it's 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 a very tedious, long process whitening these masks. So, um, what I have here is two different bowls. I went and grabbed two of my white bowls uh, so that I, you guys can kind of see some of the garbage that I'm pulling out of the mask. Um, to my knowledge, I don't know that this has ever been washed before. So, uh, what you're going to need is, well, what I like to wear is gloves, because you never know what you're going to end up pulling out of this thing. Uh, I have an old pediatric dentistry toothbrush that I jacked from my son's drawer. Clean, of course. And uh, I like these because they're the softer bristle brushes. The kids' brushes are a little bit, they, they just tend to be a little bit softer on the bristles. you got to be careful around the mouth paint the nose paint and the eyeliner with these things. And you just want to be uh, somewhat gentle overall. Uh, you're not going to do anything too crazy unless you start. I'm always, I never scrub the eye mess in, mesh in these things. I like to wash that with my hands um, and my fingers just because it's held in there by some really old glue. And you don't really want to cause that to come undone or to tear or fray. So um, I won't be using it on that portion, but I do get inside the mouth. Um, where a lot of sweat would like to build up in the bottom of the, the jaw here. And uh, so I have two different bowls. One, I'm going to do a scrubbing, which will be this one here. And then the other one, I'm going to be doing a rinsing. Now, keep in mind, I'm doing this because um, of my setup. And what I will probably end up doing is giving this an additional rinse in the sink with some warm water. This is primarily just to show you guys the stuff that even after you have scrubbed it, what can still come out in the clean bowl. So I don't know if we're going to get a whole lot of, out of this mask. If you guys have watched my previous videos and you have definitely seen some of the garbage that's been pulled out and how nasty the bowls get and even sediment that is left in the bottom. So um, I do use this. So this is just Arm & Hammer OxyClean um, laundry detergent. And I will do maybe a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half and I'll put it in the bowl and I'll agitate it. And then I generally, because this is really, really warm water, um, will let it like sit in my sink for a little while and just kind of let all that stuff um, uh, just sit on the mask and try to lift up as much as it can. Um, so... Let me see, I'm gonna move one bowl out of frame here, the, the rinsing bowl, and then pull this one in here in the center. So all I'm gonna do is pour, like I said, about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half. Maybe a little bit more. And then I take my bristle brush and I like to agitate it and kind of get the, the bubbles going, get everything nice and mixed up. And it just smells lovely. What I like to do too after I'm done, which you guys won't see me do, especially with cotton shrouds, is I lay them so flat. I lay them out perfectly and then I put an extra towel on top of it and I let it dry like that. I won't usually touch the mask for 
anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. The poly shrouds, um, they can get rid of the wrinkles a lot easier than um, the cotton shrouds. And then it's kind of crazy when I pull them off of the towel after they had been uh, sitting there drying in that position that I like. Like I said, I'll lay the streamers completely flat. Um, it's crazy to see how flat the cotton shrouds end up getting. And so you can just kind of fold it in half. I know it's, it doesn't look the greatest, but you just kind of work it in there, being, you know, gentle. Try to get as much of that in there, and you guys can already see the garbage just from the few um, passes I've done with my hand on this mask, how disgusting this water is. These masks are old, and you guys never know who you buy them from, what they've been through, so it's always a good idea um, even if you get the mask and it looks clean to you to still wash it anyway, because I mean, just look at the water. It's disgusting. That's snot, spit, sweat, whatever you want to freaking call it. It's just gross. So you just kind of put it in there and just more is coming out as I'm doing this. And then um, what I like to do is use a little bit of the concentrate. So like if I poured it in the cap, whatever is left over in the cap, I actually like to dip my brush in it, kind of dilute it just a little bit. And then I have it in the bristles. And um, it's kind of hard because I don't have a, a bigger bowl than, than this, um, but you just gently go over the mask. You guys can see, this looks like it might be a stain. I'm gonna use some acetone. Yeah, it's not coming out. And uh, you just get up in the corners where the, you know, the shroud meets the vinyl. Get in all the corners that you can. And uh, you just go all around the mask. Again, being extra careful whenever you get around the eye mesh, the eyeliner, the nose paint, and the mouth paint because uh, these masks are old and you just never know, you know, you could possibly chip some stuff. But you, I mean, you do want to brush it, but I like to just kind of just gently use the sides of the bristles, not so much the tips. And you go all the way around. And you always get all kinds of nasty buildup in the Fun World Div logos down there. It's got stuff on the chin. So yeah, in the next video, um, you guys will probably end up seeing me uh, use some acetone. I have what I use Pronto um, acetone, 100% acetone, and I will use a Q-tip and go throughout the mask, and that's what I use to get um, paint, like the overspray or paint speckles and things like that off of the mask. Um, and it's really good to get, I mean, some surface stains and stuff. I've been able to lift them right out. You never want this stuff to sit on the vinyl material. It is very, very absorbent. And you can do um, the washes as many times as you want. I've actually heard of people literally just taking these masks and throwing them in uh, their washer and then turning around and putting them in their dryer. I will never do that. That's personal preference, honestly, but. So yeah, another hot spot is right here inside the mouth. I always try to get in here as good as I can. People that have been sweating in them, but it goes to the lowest point. So it just sits in here and you'll see all kinds of gunk and whatnot in the bottom of it. And you just kind of scrub inside the mask as well. And again, I'm sorry if y'all can't see this so well. I'm doing the best I can with the space that I have here. You just want to hit every single surface that you can, all the cracks and crevices. Yeah, not too much. Um, glue overspray. Most of these things, will, you guys will actually see the mask will have um, like dark spots that you can see through to the front from all the glue over. I wouldn't say overspray because I think they use a, they paint it on there. I don't. Use your fingers to kind of rub this. Don't use your bristle brush. I accidentally went over it. And yeah, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I rinse this out in the sink as well. I'm just using these bowls um, 
to kind of show you guys my process and so you can see all the stuff that comes out. Now I had done when I first started collecting a video and I, I've been contemplating going in and, and removing it because I was still learning at the time, but I had done a Gen 1 cotton shroud, of course, and it, the water was dang near black and I thought that it was all just nasty sediment that had come out of the mask and turns out um, if they've never been washed before, depending on how I guess the shroud is deteriorating, it's actually dye from the shroud. These poly shrouds will not have that. So everything that you saw in that bowl is what was dirt and garbage in the mask. And then you just put it in a bowl of fresh water here and we'll just kind of give it a good rinse. Try to get out as much as we can. But yeah, um, well, it's not too bad. You always want to give it a couple of washes. And even after I do a whitening treatment, obviously, it'll have another wash after that. There we go. It's not too bad. You just want to try to get out all the stuff that you can. So I don't know if you guys have had a chance to meet Lee at um, any of these cons. He uh, went to his first one in Horror Hound, I think it was sometime last year. Um, I met him, I believe it was his second one at the time, and that was in uh, Pasadena, California. And he straight up told me he had no idea what he calls Scream Nation was this crazy. I told him he was contemplating on continuing or not trying to get the feel for everything and I told him I was like you have no idea how crazy these scream fans get I was like if you show up they will be there I promise you and it was so nice to be able to see him um at this last con in uh, creepy con see there's some leftover stuff not too bad but that's why I used a white bowl so that you guys could kind of see even after you've scrubbed it what you'll still get out and again I will still rinse it again in the sink but um, yeah, it was really good to see him with the fans. He genuinely loves his fans. He really does. Um, so just such a sweet guy. So glad that I had a chance to really get to know him and that he gave me this opportunity to take care of this mask for him because it's a beauty. I love the style of the small dots. He actually, now that I'm thinking about it, had asked me to shape up the eyes on this. He didn't like how they kind of bulged, how most of us kind of like the bulging and the misshapenness of the eyes. He asked me to fix it. So I might end up being, let's see if I do one more, it'll be my third, it'll be the whitening video and then I'll probably do a shaping and then, yeah, so maybe it might end up being five videos unless I can try to cut down and squeeze that into another video. I don't want these things being too long. Some of them have gone a little bit overboard in the past and all right. So poly shroud, this thing will dry within the next couple of hours. Always make sure that you dab on the inside and because the water that I have used is so warm, it will still build up like condensation in the mouth. So just make sure that you don't leave that I live in a drier climate out here in Nevada, in the Vegas area, so I mean I don't have to worry about it too terribly much, but when I lived in South Carolina a couple of years ago, the humidity just stays in the air and then your mask can just kind of smell a little funky and you don't really want that, so let me lay this out here. So then I'll just lay it out and I'll, I'll lay the, the tassels or streamers, whatever you want to call them, nice and flat. And then after I get it all set out like that, I will literally leave it. That way there's no wrinkles or anything. These poly shrouds are so easy to do compared to the cotton shrouds. Um, but yeah, so I hope that I was able to show you guys something. It's not anything really all that crazy. Some people act like these masks are, I mean, they are fragile in a sense, but um, I've used 15 to 3,000 1500 to 3000 grit sandpaper on them um, in certain areas to try to get surface stains out, things like this. If you're very careful, it will be fine. They're not glass. So um, 
anyways, I hope that uh, this video helped some of you guys out. Uh, don't be afraid to try these things with your masks at home. Um, the next video that I will be doing um, is probably going to be just a little bit longer. It's going to be um, whitening, and then I will probably include some pictures of the progress along the way. And uh, yeah, so anyways, thanks for joining me today, guys, and hopefully I'll see you guys on the next video. Stay spooky.